Iceland is a place built by volcanoes, threatened by volcanoes, massive cloud of ash, famous for volcanoes, and perhaps strangest of all, powered by volcanoes. Figuring out how to turn lava into electricity has been instrumental in helping Iceland to grow from one of the poorest countries in Europe to one of the richest in the world, and the only country in the world powered entirely by renewable energy. This is a story about an island with way too much power, and how that blessing might be turning into a curse. All right, before we get going, I wanna give a quick thank you to my friends over at Artlist for sponsoring this video and making this entire trip possible. If you haven't heard of them before, Artlist is a gigantic library of amazing music and also sound effects that you can use in your videos. So here's how I use this library to find the music that you just heard in the intro to this video. There are several different ways you can search for music on Artlist, but usually I start with the genre. I'm almost always looking for something cinematic, and in this case, I was also looking for something specifically classical. Then I'll dial in the mood that I'm looking for. In this case, this is the intro to the video, so I want something exciting to grab your attention but also something tense. This intro has a bit of mystery, it has some twists and turns, so I want the music to reflect that. That search eventually brought me to this track, which was absolutely perfect for the intro to this video. You can also search by video theme or even by the instruments included in the track. So later on in this video, the music I use is very spacey and synth heavy. And in order to find that, I just searched for ambient tracks that included synths. And usually I end up finding way more music than I actually need. For this video, I ended up downloading 13 tracks that I really liked and only ended up using four to complete the video. It's great, it's incredibly affordable for online creators, and I can't recommend it enough. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, there'll be a link in the description of this video. You can use that link to get an additional two months completely free. Huge thanks again to Artlist for sponsoring this video, making this trip possible, and now let's head back out to Iceland and enjoy some hot springs. Sounds pretty nice. So steamy. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go, that's better. So the TLDR is that this is more or less all about hot springs. Iceland sits on what's called a mid-ocean ridge, which is just like a big underwater tectonic plate boundary. Two plates are spreading apart, basically creating a giant underwater range of volcanoes. And Iceland is the rarity where that's above water. So Iceland is super volcanic. Tons of volcanoes, tons of volcanic activity, and part of that is magma closer to the surface and very close to the surface in particular areas. And in those areas, that magma will heat up groundwater. That water turns to steam and it turns to less dense water, rises up through cracks in the earth, and when it reaches the surface, you get a geothermal feature. Those can be geysers, where hot water shoots up into the air, hot springs where you can swim around in naturally warm water, fumaroles where steam and gases escape into the air, or mud pits, which are like a less pleasant version of hot springs. They're cool and pretty, but they're a lot more than that, especially for people living here in Iceland. Iceland has hundreds of these geothermal features and they can be used to generate power. They just drill down into the ground, releasing steam that can be used to turn a turbine and generate energy. It's that simple. And they can also pump up hot water from hot springs to heat water in homes and buildings. Actually, a lot of places in Iceland don't have hot water heaters because they just pump it right up from hot springs. This was actually kind of an accidental discovery. In 1907, an Icelandic farmer decided to run a pipe from a hot spring into his house to try and heat it, and it worked. The technique spread around Iceland, but it didn't explode quite yet. Fast forward to the 1970s, and there's an oil crisis affecting dozens of countries, including Iceland. We have at present an absolute shortage of natural gas. We cannot produce as much as we can use. With oil becoming more and more expensive, they decided to lean into geothermal power. They searched out new geothermal hotspots, built new geothermal power infrastructure, and it worked. It worked so well, in fact, that after the oil crisis settled down, they never really looked back. Today, geothermal power is pretty much universal in Iceland. 90% of the homes here are heated by geothermal power, and Iceland is the only country in the world that gets 100% of its heat and power from renewable sources. 
Geothermal power saves Iceland a ton of money and helps cut the country's CO2 emissions by about 40%. Even after heating and powering all of these buildings, Iceland is still only using a fraction of its potential renewable energy. And they know it. So they've been finding ways to capitalize on this extra power, allowing corporations to come in and use it. These are usually large industries that require a huge, reliable stream of power, like data servers, and in particular, aluminum smelters. Since the 1990s, Iceland's aluminum industry has grown massively. Companies have flocked here to build factories and capitalize on this cheap, reliable power. Some use geothermal power, but a lot of them are using hydroelectric power. And this is where it gets messy. Iceland is covered in glaciers, and as a result, it's covered in rivers. Those rivers provide another plentiful source of renewable energy. But where geothermal power means drilling a relatively inconspicuous hole in the ground, hydropower means damming one of these beautiful rivers. Not only are you obstructing this beautiful wild landscape, you're potentially doing some serious environmental damage. And Icelanders aren't gonna let that happen without a fight. In 2009, Iceland's largest hydro plant opened along a river in the Eastern Highlands, powering an aluminum smelting plant for an American corporation called Alcoa. Now, this plant's construction was heavily protested by Icelanders, like Björk's mom went on a hunger strike to protest it. That's true, you can look that part up. And it's not an isolated event. Research Iceland's hydropower and you'll find case after case of hydro projects being met with massive protests from Icelanders. Here's why this matters. Iceland isn't the only place sitting on a gold mine of renewable energy, which is exciting. These developments pave the way for a greener, more efficient future and create new industries in growing economies. Iceland has shown that, but it's also shown what can happen when large corporations take advantage of these resources without consideration for the people living next to them. Iceland was really the first on the scene here. They were able to use their resources to heat and power their own homes before outside interests really got involved. And they've been pretty successful putting their foot down when these projects overreach. Let's hope these other places have a similar story. <laughs>